Gratch. I'm a professor of computer science and psychology here at the University of Southern California. So my research is the area of affective computing, which that means is trying to get computers to reason about emotion, so recognizing emotion in people, understanding how emotion shapes our decisions, and possibly using techniques to shape people's emotions. This is an interesting and exciting time to do research on emotion. We, we live in very emotional times and there's a growing understanding that emotion can have both adaptive and maladaptive uh, roles in individual life and society. And so uh, there's really an explosion of interest in technology on how to measure uh, people's emotion and growing uh, imaginative applications on how to use those techniques to better people's lives. So one of the sort of transformational things in computer science today is these what are called large language models. An example is GPT-3 or ChatGPT. These are algorithms that have been trained over the entire internet, basically, and they seem to be able to capture a lot of the sort of intuitions that people have about language and storytelling. You can ask it questions and they, they seem incredibly thoughtful in their responses. My interest in emotion, I wanted to see how good is this language model at reasoning about emotion situations. So I use my students. They normally, at the start of the class, I give them a homework assignment where they have to think about an emotional event, write down what happened. What we did this year is we gave those uh, stories to to GPT-3 and asked it a series of questions. Did you feel good or bad? How unexpected or expected was this event? How much control did you have over it? Uh, how would you cope? And what did you feel? Its responses blew people away. People thought it was magical. For example, the story might be, you know, I, I went to the airport with my girlfriend for a trip we planned for a number of years. When we got there, my passport was expired. And it knew that that would be undesirable, that you would probably blame yourself for that situation. Uh, and there's various ways you might be able to cope, including you know, apologizing profusely uh, to your significant other. One thing to note about these algorithms like GPT-3 is they're machine learning. They're learning from human data. And so one might ask, you know, are they learning to become emotional? I mean, I think what we know from these techniques is what they're really learning to do is they're able to talk like people would talk about these situations. That's not the same thing as arguing that the machine has an emotion. Emotions help us understand what's important in the world. They prepare our physiology uh, to act, to address the challenges we have in the moment. And you can imagine as machines become increasingly sophisticated, they're going to need something like physiology, something like emotion to help them become more adaptive. Now, whether they can learn that from you know, observing people or that has to be programmed in, I mean, that's what we'll learn in the next you know, few decades. So we might ask, why do we want to give machines the ability to reason about emotion? And you know, the, the real answer is that machines are increasingly there to interact with us and to help us in everyday lives. And in that humans experience emotion, it's important for the machine uh, to help understand that as well. Applications include, for example, techniques to help people regulate their emotional state. So maybe software can recognize how much stress you're feeling and suggest ways to intervene or in a therapy session, you could monitor your responses and, and help the clinician provide a more targeted and, and beneficial treatment for you. Also, like, you know, recognizing that people are angry on the freeway and maybe the car could help alert you to, you know, or maybe you should, you know, <laughs> chill out a little bit. Helping people with autism who have a difficulty perceiving emotional cues in others, software might be able to augment those social deficits and their ability to process emotional information in real time. Having your your playlist, you know, set what what mood or emotion you want to feel today, and have your music playlist from Spotify automatically adjust and play songs to regulate that. There's a whole host of reasons why you know emotion is important to you know how we feel our well-being and the sense that machines can reason about that can help us achieve our goals. Why do I choose to use machines to study people or, or how people interact with machines? I mean, partly I think it's my real kind of inclination is I'm, I'm a psychologist by heart, so I'm interested in humans and I see machines 
and how people interact with machines is an important tool to give insights into actual human behavior. So we can use these machines both to measure and study uh, things like facial expressions or physiological responses, but then we can have people interact with virtual characters where we systematically uh, control what expression that character shows, how does it talk, how does it uh, move its body, and that gives us uh, a lot of power and ability to run experiments to understand things like social cognition. A lot of my research is trying to understand how do people treat machines differently than they treat people. Uh, generally speaking, people don't view machines as having emotion. If you kind of ask them what kind of mind the machine has increasingly, they see machines as incredibly intelligent, but not necessarily able to understand emotional cues. And that actually shapes the way we interact with them. We're, we, we don't treat them like people. We're, we're less offended. We don't take it personal when they make mistakes that cause us harm compared to another person might. But we tend to not follow social rules. We're not polite with machines. We don't worry about getting too close to the machine. and uh, we, we care less about hurting its feelings. Interestingly, you know, we'll, we'll learn in the next few years, but as machines start to exhibit these emotional behaviors, they understand maybe they say something, Alexa says something when, when you insult her. Maybe that will make us treat machines more like people. And then we could ask as a society, is that actually something that we desire as a goal? Uh, or not and how the behavior of that machine should then change accordingly.